Facial animation is a complex and ongoing tax industry that uses computer graphics. It is required a large investment of time and money to build audiovisual pieces that are credible and attractive to the target audience. The difficulty of this tax is further increased by the constant exposure of people from an early age to female faces, so they could be considered expert in determining whether uh, facial animation is coherent or not. For that reason, it's very easy for human beings to feel uncomfortable when perceived an animation that presents anatomical inconsistencies, so it can generate displeasure or distraction, even causing them to misinterpreted the message that was intended to be transmitted. One of the most outstanding examples of the implementation of technology is the Dali Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida, with its Dali's Life exhibit, which used machine learning to construct more than 45 minutes of video of the famous painter Salvador Dali so that visitors can interact and enrich their on-site experience. While it is true that this measure is extremely interesting, the machine learning model in question only works to automatically generate animation of the painter Salvador Dali, since it was trained with, with more than 6,000 video frames of that person and the driving video used for the generation of the animations were made by an actor with similar physical appearance. Therefore, it's more complicated to build a model that is capable of automatically generating animation of people who are physically different from the people in the video drivers and of whom there is no record of the training stage. Although it is true that currently there are models capable of generating facial animation automatically using only a target image that differs from those used in the training stage. They share the two same problems. The animation they generate are of very low resolution and they require a large amount of training data to generate uh, good results. For the case of deep learning models focus on the task of animation museum painting, it would be inefficient to use those that require a large amount of data in the training stage, since in, in general, there is little graphical information about the historical character. Automatic animation is an area of research in constant development since the video generated by these models are becoming more and more perfect, even becoming almost impossible for the human being to distinguish the synthesized video from the real ones. The usefulness of these models is to be able to generate videos automatically, dispensing to, the, to a lesser or greater extent with human intervention, which considered considerably reduce the time and cost of generating animation. Research papers dealing with the automatic animation problem can be grouped according to the type of data that they use. In the first group, there are those that use audio files as input data. The problem with this investigation that is that they focus mainly on mount animation, so other types of facial expression are not well represented. In the second group, there are those that use modeling and 3D animation as input data. The problem with this investigation is that they are generally require specialized equipment for motion capture or that robust computational environments are needed to work with three-dimensional objects. In the last group, there are those that use image and or videos as input data. The problem with this investigation that is that they require a large amount of data in their training stage to generate automatically correct animation. Therefore, our motivation is to propose a modification to the attitude of a stage of art deep learning model that additionally takes advantage 
of the benefit of employing a model focus on the video quality improvement. Before selecting an image animation model as basic, we perform an exhaustive analysis of state-of-art models focused on this task. We considered a total of five models, of which we compared technical, quantitative, and quality data presented in their respective research paper, as well as quantitative and qualitative data obtained after testing these models. After our analysis, the winning model was FOAM, proposed by Alias Sar et al. The approach proposed in FOAM is mainly composed of two models, the motion estimation model and the image generation model. The former receives as input data a target image denoted by S and the driver image denoted by D to predict the dense motion field and occlusion mass. The image generation model is in charge to deform the target image based on the dense motion field and the recovering the deformation artifacts. The problem with FOAM is that the K-point detection model based in unit architecture requires a lot of training data to generate good results. We propose instead to use the unit tree plus architecture for the K-point detection model since this architecture combines the multi-scale feature through redesign of the skip connection and uses large-scale deep supervision, which provides fewer parameters but in return produces a more accurate segmentation map with respect to the position and the limit of the feature. Image animation models are often trained on low-resolution images. As increasing the resolution of the input image does not significantly improve the quality of the animation and in some cases affects the tracking of the eyes and the mouth, resulting in poor quality animation with strange artifacts since the detection of key points is complicated. To deal with the low resolution of the video generated by the animation model, we propose to complement it with a video super resolution model. To further support this research, we proceeded with a research, collection, analysis, and comparison of the science articles presenting content related to the super resolution of videos. After selection of the total of 15 bit models, the metrics that we are using of their respective comparison were defined. We used PSMR peak signal to noise ratio and SSIM structural similarity metrics since they are the standard for determining how good a super resolution video model is. Additionally, the execution time of the model was considered in order to find options that avoid extending too much the time to obtain the results. We selected three models, BDSR, SR. MD and MSRN. Because the research is focused on the animation of images of human faces, it was decided to use the Voxelep dataset since it consists of more than 20,000 videos extracted from the YouTube platform, which contain facial data from different speakers. The processing consisted in the detection of people's faces in each of the download videos for which an initial delimiter was extracted in the first frame of each video that contained the entire facial area of the speaker and the processing was repeated in the next frames of the video to get the maximum amount of image. In order to lighten the computational load and reduce the processing time to train the image animation model, it was decided to implement a sampling method capable of separate the data into n groups which have an equal number of folders with processed data. A special feature of this function is that it selects the folders randomly and without repeating the data. That is, the folders were selected exclusively for, for each subgroup. In addition to ensure the replicability of the sequenced test, a seed was used in the sampling function. The image animation models that were part of the experiments were trained with subgroups of the dataset. To do this, modifications were made to the training. Nine training tests with 
100 subgroups, 9 training tests with 200 subgroups, and 9 training tests with 500 subgroups were carried out for each of the architecture that were proposed. To avoid the, that the training time in each of the tests was too long, it was decided to train each one with 10 epoch. To evaluate the performance of the models, we use five metrics perceptual loss, average escape point distance, average Euclidean distance, peak signal to noise, radio, and structural similarity. The experiments with image animation models were divided into three groups models training with 100, 200, and 500 videos. The purpose of this experiment was to find a trend with respect to the result obtained in each of these tests, which allow, which will allow to predict the result that would be obtained if all the training data were used, which are approximately 18,000. The deep learning model for image animation with the UNET 3 plus architecture tends to obtain the best results for the perceptual loss, AKD, IED, and SSIM metrics, which shows that it is most efficient for four of the five metrics used in the comparison. Therefore, we include qualitative experiment with users so that they could determine which model generated the best videos. For this purpose, a total of 40 users were consulted with a series of videos. Each one consisted of the total of four videos of the Mona Lisa performing movement. The videos generated by the models with the UNET 3 Plus architecture were the most chosen option by the user for the two questions that they were asked. For the case of the most automatically correct video question, the videos generated by the model with UNET 3 Plus architecture were chosen by 71.25% of all cases, while, the most, while for the most visually appealing video question, the videos generated by the model with the same architecture were chosen by 62.08%, which shows far superior results compared to the rest of the model. We present a novel approach to K-point basic image animation using UNET 3 Plus architecture. This architecture allows generated visually and anatomically more correct videos with more or less training data compared to the baseline, thanks to being more efficient and accurate when detecting landmarks in the videos, thanks to the large-scale jump connection and deep supervision. Furthermore, we propose that complementing an image animation model with a super-resolution video model helps both quantitative and qualitative to generate more visual appealing video for user. We evaluate such a hypothetic and demonstrate that such a complementary approach clearly outperforms models lacking such a complement, both in metrics and the user testing with human judgment.